Hi everyone, it's Fanona the Left-Handed Beater. Um, I'm doing something a little different. I am going to tell you my breast cancer story. October is Breast Cancer Awareness. And I was watching a YouTube video and they were talking, there were three, fa three family members that all had breast cancer. So they each shared their breast cancer story. So I thought I would share mine with you. I originally filmed this for my other channel and... So I'm just doing an introduction, and then I'll bring you in into the my, my cancer story. My journey started in 2017. We had decided to build onto our home and build on a garage, an attached garage, and, and do a second story for my studio. We had just finished signing the papers, and at the end of that week, I think it was September 1st, and it was a Friday, and I came home from work. I was working in Regina at the time, and I came home that night and brought my niece home with me to visit, and I felt a lump, and I was freaked out because it was like right at 12 o'clock, what they call 12 o'clock. They, they base your lumps on a clock, so mine was right at 12 o'clock, and it was a long weekend. I couldn't see my doctor, so I was freaking out, and I kept asking my husband, can you feel that? Can you feel that? <laughs> I didn't want to say anything to my niece because I didn't want her to get upset. So I had to wait till, it was a Labor Day weekend in Canada. So I had to wait until Tuesday morning. I phoned my doctor's office and said, I really need to see her. Can I get in today? And they said, no, but you can get in tomorrow. So I went the next day and she felt the lump too. And, and she said, well, we should send you for a biopsy. Oh no, we should send you for a mammogram she said and he said don't worry most of the time and I said it hurts and she said well cancer usually doesn't hurt so she said that's a good sign and most of the time um, these lumps are, are just lumps like they're not nothing to worry about so I went for the mammogram um, my granddaughter was born Sunday my first granddaughter and we were at the hospital late that night and the next day I went for my mammogram and um, I remember that morning at work, I had printed out pictures of my granddaughter to show everyone. I was excited. It's my first grandchild. And one of the superintendents came by my desk and she said, I don't think that's effective use of a school division's money or time. And I, I kind of thought, you witch. <laughs> but anyway, I, um, that afternoon I went for my um, mammogram and they said, we'd like you to stay for an ultrasound. So I'm thinking, what? Yeah, okay. So they did the ultrasound, and then the doctor came in, and he said, I want you to go see your doctor right away. I don't want you to wait for me to send this report. I want you to get into her as soon as possible. Well, she wasn't working that day, so I, um, I phoned. I got in the next day, and I, I couldn't go back to work after that. I was just freaked out. Like, I kept asking everyone and looking online, can a radiologist see if a tumor's cancerous or not? And um, so I went to see the doctor the next day, and she said, well, let's get you for a biopsy. And I've, I, I complain about my doctor a lot um, because the waiting time is horrendous to see her. Like, you can your appointment could be at 1, and it could be 4 o'clock before you get in to see her. But when it's serious, she knows everybody, and she gets you in right away. So I think it was a week. I could have gone. I could have gone for my biopsy right the next day. But I was taking some pills that I had to be off of for at least three days. So I couldn't go till the next week. So Monday we went and we did the biopsy. And, and then Thursday night, I had gone shopping with my mom and picked up things for lunch for work and everything. And we went out for supper and the doctor's office phoned and said, Doctor, we would like to see you first thing tomorrow afternoon because she came sent her first appointments at 11 or 1. I think it was 1. So I went into her office, and this was September 29th. The job I did, I was in charge of the student information system at the school division. And the 29th of September, or the last working day of September, is a big day because we submit our numbers, uh, student enrollment numbers, up to the school to the ministry, and the school division gets paid based on how many students are there. So it's a really important day for me to be at work. But um, 
I, I had to go. I had to go see the doctor. And plus, our files were looking good. Like, sometimes the numbers fluctuate a lot, but it was looking really good that day. And it was just a matter of monitoring to see if numbers changed or not. But anyway, I went to the doctor's office, and she said, I'm so sorry, Winona, but you have cancer. And so she, she let me take pictures of the reports. It was um, in situ ductal carcinoma and invasive ductal carcinoma is what they they said so um I left her office and I was just she said to me the last word she said is when she'll get me in to see a surgeon who I I've been seen before so and she said whatever they tell you to do do that's the best advice I can give you so I was driving home, and I phoned my friend and said, you know, I have cancer. I'm not driving home, driving back to work. And I said, I have cancer, I have breast cancer. And we talked for a bit and went back to work. And I wor worked with a lady that wasn't always very nice. And she made a comment that, because I was going to be off. If I told my boss if I had cancer, I was going home. I was working out of, in a different city that I live in. I was commuting. And if I had cancer, I didn't want to deal with that. So we, um, I was working, trying to get, make sure the numbers are right and everything. It was about 2.30 in the afternoon, and, and this woman I worked with says, well, I hope they replace you. I don't want to do this job all on my own. And it was enough. It just set me off. So I went into my boss's office and said, I'm sorry, I'm done. I can't do this right now. I'm, I'm done. So then I was driving home, and on the way home, a friend's husband phoned me, which was really weird, and he told me to pull over. So I pulled over. It's an hour and a half home from Regina. And he said to me, um, my friend's, my other friend that I had talked to to tell her about, you know, I had cancer, her husband died. And I was like, oh my goodness, what else can happen? So I got home, I told my husband that, um, we had to go over their place because he had died and, and visit with them. So I kind of put that on hold. Well, my doctor got me in. This was a Friday. My doctor got me in Tuesday to see the surgeon. So I saw the surgeon, and um, I had to get quite a few tests done. I had to get quite a bit of imaging done and, and everything. And she felt that she could take – I wanted to get mastectomies. That was my first thing, like get rid of them I don't need them and she said no you've got enough breast tissue there um, I know I can get it all and save your breasts and she said if you want it you can go to another surgeon but I won't do it like I won't do it you have to see someone else so I didn't want to see anybody else because I knew she was really good at what she did and so this was beginning of October so then I had to go and get all this testing done and I think November 23rd was my surgery date and I had to get little implants in, and I basically, there's two hospitals in Regina, and I, I started out the day at one hospital, then had to go to the other hospital, then had to go back to the other hospital because of the, the machinery they had at each hospital. And I was exhausted by the time I went in for surgery. It was day surgery. And w what started out as a, a quarter-sized lump by the time they did the biopsy, it was the size of a toonie or a loony, which in Canada is our dollar coin, which is bigger than a quarter. By the time they did the surgery, it was two lumps growing into one, and it was four centimeters by, I think, three. So um, she got it all out, and they tested it. And then in January, I got the call to go to the cancer clinic, and they said I had stage two cancer and um, wanted to do chemo and radiation. So I got my first chemo treatment and I ended up, I came home and ended up phoning my mom and saying, can you come get me? I'm, I'm not well, I'm like a zombie, I'm not well. I never got nauseous or anything. And um, so she drove out and got me and brought me home and then my hair started falling out right away. So we went and got my hair cut short because I had longer hair. And the day I got my hair cut, I remember I, I, I was really good friends with my hairdresser and I was sitting there in the chair and I could hardly talk to her. I was just done. 
and we came home and I was just freezing. So we called the cancer clinic and they said, get to the hospital right away. So we got to the hospital in emergency and you have to wait forever. And then my fever broke and uh, my clothing was soaking wet. And then they brought me in and I was in a room with four people and the lady beside me was in jail. And she, she said she was sick, so they brought her from jail and she wanted to see her family while she was there and everything. And she's dry heaving and um, all of a sudden they come running and they said, get her in isolation, get her in isolation. She's neutropenic, which means I had no immune system. So they put me in isolation and, and then I went up to the oncology ward and I had to stay there for a few days um, in isolation. And because if I got any germ, I could, I could die. So the doctors in the oncology ward kept saying they're giving, that it's too much chemo for you. And I tried to explain to her that my body doesn't metabolize things properly, but she didn't listen. So um, go for my second treatment and same thing. I, end, I didn't even go home that time. And I ended up, it was the middle of the night. My son was coming up to Regina and I didn't want to bother my mom. So I, I said, when you get here, I want to go to the hospital. And he, he didn't feel right me just leaving. So he woke mom up and it ended up, they both came to the hospital anyway. Same thing, neutropenic, no immune system, get her in isolation. So I was in isolation. Then the doctors kept saying, you're, you're, they're giving you too much chemo. It, it, it's, they need to reduce your chemo. My oncologist refused. Then I, I came home the next, between the second and third after that, and I started getting a rash on my hands in here, and it started to go up into my arms and on my face, around my eyes, my ears, and my feet, around my feet. And then all of a sudden my skin would just peel off, like thick layers of plastic, it would just peel. And it hurt, it hurt like heck. So I phoned a friend and we're busy calving at that time of year. My husband, like, that's our living. That's that's where we get our money from. And he can't just say, okay, I'll take you up to the city. And then we end up losing calves or losing cows because nobody's here to help them. So um, my friend took me up to Regina to emergency. My mom came with, once we got to Regina, mom came with to the hospital. and. The doctors there said they'd never seen anything like that. They didn't know what it was. So they asked if I could stay in the city overnight and they would get me into an oncologist. So they got me in an, into an oncologist first thing in the morning and she said, they're giving you too much chemo, it's killing you. And she phoned and she tried to get the, onco uh, the oncologist to reduce the chemo. And she finally agreed to reduce it by 10%. It's third time around, same thing get my chemo a few days later I'm in the hospital again um, I'm in bad shape my hair's all gone um, I have this rash all over my face my hands my eyes like everything hurt um, I started to get nerve damage then and I used to feel like in here like I had been to a dentist and the freezing was coming out not so badly anymore as much as it some days it is but then it was every day and if I lied down with my arm, my arm would suddenly swing forward and swing back and hit me in the face. I hit myself in the face a lot back then. Just my nerves, just doing that. And my legs, my legs, as soon as I started to relax, my legs would just fly. So anyway, went the fourth time and I only had to do four rounds of chemo. And, um, I had a list of all this that was going on and then my tear ducts got blocked and I was crying, like tears were rolling down my face and I remember going to the cancer clinic and the receptionist, they really monitor your mental health every time you have to fill out forms about your mental health. And I remember the receptionist asking me if I'm okay and I said, yeah, I'm fine, I, I can't control this. It's just, just like if I went out in public, that's the way I was. And um, so I had a list of things for my oncologist to deal with. And I brought it in and the nurse said to me, pick one, she'll only deal with one. And I said, I can't, I can't pick one. Like I'm falling apart, I can hardly walk. I can't even put socks on. I have a hard time with any kind of shoe, even a sandal with the pain. 
And they, I think they thought I was just a big baby. And I can take a lot of pain. Like, I've been kicked by cows. I've been kicked by a cow so hard it dented my shin bone. And I can take it. But um, everything happening was too much for me. The oncologist came in, said the same thing. Pick one. And I said, I can't. I can't pick one. So she left the room. And I, I guess she called the dermatologist. And she came back and she said, well, reduce your chemo to 75%. So... So I only got 75% of the full dose. So they did that. And that time I didn't have to go to the hospital. That was the only time I didn't have to go. And then I saw her on the 13th of April. I was still a mess. I, I couldn't think. I sew. I have sewn all my life. And I've had my machine for well over 20 years. I didn't know how to thread my sewing machine. I couldn't thread it. I couldn't figure out. Like, I, I I couldn't remember anything. I couldn't read, and I'm, I was a librarian, and I couldn't read. So um, just bad shape. And then she put me on a medication, and then she said I was to see a radiation oncologist within a couple of weeks. So I, I, I only cried three times through all of this process, and the third time was when I saw the radiation oncologist because I, I didn't want my mom to see how hard it was on me. I think she was dealing with enough. I, I, I didn't want her to know I was, I was crying and upset. But when I saw the oncologist, um, he said that they wanted to start right away. And I broke into tears. And I said, I can't. I want to go home. I haven't been home for four months. I want to go home. So he let me go home for a few weeks. And then they started. And I did radiation uh, Monday through Friday for a whole month. And that was a piece of cake. I never had, I can't complain about that. That, that went well and I have no issues. But um, it was a hard journey and it's still a hard journey. Um, my hair never came back, so I wear a wig all the time. Look at my face, how puffy it is. It's like that all the time. My eyes are puffy all the time. I'm not the same. Like, if I showed you a picture of what I look like, and I know I shouldn't obsess about my looks, but it does bother me. Before cancer and after, I'm a totally different person. I I used to multitask all the time. I, I had a computer job. I, I was a secretary for many years. I could be on 10 different projects at the same time. I can't do that anymore. I can't think. I can't remember to turn the oven off. I can't remember to put the clothes in the dryer. I, my mom is 85 this week, and she's my support. When I go to the city, she drives me around because I can't drive because of my feet. I can drive in the summer when I can use cruise control, but if I have to drive in the city or anything like that, I can't because I don't know where my feet are half the time. I've lost that sensation. So anyway, it's not the best journey. The cancer itself wasn't the cause of this. It was a doctor that caused all this, a doctor who refused to listen to me. And it took my GP a while to realize, finally realize that how bad I was and how bad I still am. I think she thought I was making it up for a long time. And then one day she finally broke down and she said, I'm so sorry, Winona. Um, if I had known what it was going to be like, I wouldn't have told you that. She said, I would have told you to stand up for yourself. And she cried, and it helps. And she's really good now. She's, she, I, I go to see her, and she realizes that, you know, I'm not faking this. This is my life. It's a lot different. But there are blessings. Um, there are blessings in this. We built this addition, and my salary was going to pay for it. But, you know, God has blessed us, and... We've been able to make the payments every year, so that's not an issue. And this year we'll have it paid off. Um, I love to craft. That's why we built this studio, because when I retired, I was going to craft. Well, now my feet are in such pain. I can't do a lot of the things I used to do. Like, I can't vacuum. I can't sweep. I can't maintain my house. So we have a housekeeper come in every few weeks and do that. Um, so this gives me a license to craft whenever I want to do things. I saw, uh, I went to the pain clinic and I saw a doctor there and she said to me, I can't take away your pain. We can't take away your pain. There's, there's nothing we can do. Um, but she says, 
I'll give you pills to help you sleep. And that's made a huge difference for me. And she said, during the day, do things that make you happy and take your mind off your feet. And that's what I do now. That's why I can stitch. That's why I can quilt. That's why I can make my jewelry. Um, that's what I do. Like in the morning, I kind of do a few things downstairs. And then I'm up here till supper, till I have to cook supper. <laughs> And that's usually it for me because by then I'm exhausted and I don't get much done in the evenings. But um, it's a different life than I thought I'd have. But it's also a good life. It really is. You have to look for the good in everything and, and know that, you know, um, I truly believe that God doesn't give you anything you can't handle. And he does it for the good. So right now, I may not know why I've gone through this journey the way it is, but I know that I'm in God's hand, and he, somewhere down the line, I'll see why um, why this has happened to me. But um, that's another thing. I want to go get my eyebrows tattooed because they don't have much for eyebrows. But I just need to... Anyway... So sorry to leave you so sad. <laughs> My video isn't about this. I just thought it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Let's share our stories of what we went through with breast cancer. I think as women, sometimes we don't get treated as well as men, and we don't get respect. Like I should have stood up for myself and said, no, I'm not doing this. Um, I got blood clots. Um, they put a pick line in because my, my veins, I was hospitalized every time and my veins were drying up. They had to draw blood from my feet and that hurts. And they had to do blood pressure on my feet too, because they can't do it on my left arm because I, I, I had lymph nodes removed and my right arm was busy with the IV. So, um, and the veins had dried up cause that's where they were delivering the cancer, the chemo through. So I got blood clots. As soon as they put the pick line in, I felt it. I just felt it right away. My body is just so bad. It just reacts to things like crazy. Anything, it just attacks. And so I had to go on blood thinners. And I, within a couple of days of doing an, an injection based on my height and weight, I was getting terrible nosebleeds. And so I phoned the cancer clinic, and the doctor called back and said, Don't, reduce it by half don't take both doses, just do one dose a day. And then I was fine. But I thought to myself, okay, she was fine with that with the blood thinners, but why didn't she think that, that the chemo drug was the same, that maybe I needed less because my body doesn't metabolize things. The good thing is that my doctor, my GP told me that the chemo nearly killed you, so it's obviously killed all the cancer, so. And I just live every day. Every day is a blessing. You wake up in the morning, you're happy. Um, you do as much as you can do that day. And how many people can spend the day doing all this fun stuff, playing with their toys as an adult? You know, I, I've got a license to do that now. I, I don't feel guilty. Um, I do what I want. Thank you for watching and listening. Um, as usual, I wish you lots of love and happiness. Until we meet again, take care, my friends. Bye-bye.